Okay, we're going to start on the parts for 512, the rocker assembly. Let's see, double check, rocker assembly. And we're going to make the, um, the assembly exploded uh, view for the, uh, for the drawing with the bloom callouts and build materials. And then um, we'll see about doing the animation. So in the, uh, the lab, we created the custom properties. So I'm going to start uh, applying materials and the, uh, the part numbers, and we'll see where those um, uh, start to play out in the, um, in the title block. And if you're using the, um, the standard A landscape title block, then uh, it will populate some of that information, but um, maybe not all of it. So we'll, we'll see what we get. Um, more for informational purposes than anything that uh, will go that route. All right, so the link, um, fly that back in for a second. 30 millimeters between centers, 10 millimeter radius on the outside, 10 millimeter holes. So um, we'll open a sketch on the front plane. We'll go into the slot and drag out, set the position, go into the smart dimensions, 30, 10 for the radius, and then we need two circles at the ends. And we'll jump into the select, control select, set to equal, and oh, then we'll uh, apply the smart dimension and get a diameter of 10. Extrude out to the 5 millimeter thickness. And we'll go ahead and accept. And then we're going to need a new part um, location. So should be for assignment five. Oh, and I should have named it link. I made, made the folder. All right, so let's do a, um, see if we can do a rename. So if I close that out and I find my folder, and go to admin. So this is where I wanted to see, let's just go ahead and create a new folder here out of the Windows uh, File Explorer. So this should be the AO5. And this one is going to be the drive link. So at this point, I haven't um, uh, signed it in any assembly or drawing, but I'm still going to say to be on the safe side, let's go to the SolidWorks. If you're in Windows 10, that should be on the first level. Otherwise, we'll go to the second and rename. And this becomes the drive link. Okay, so it let me rename it, which uh, which is fine. And I need to open it back up. So let's see, if we go to Recents, and do the R, and it's telling me file not file. Well, that was because I renamed it. And... Um, Let's see, I should go ahead and move that into the uh, the folder so that I have that started. So we're going to go open it, go into 5, open the drive link, and go into the custom property. So point being that um, uh, occasionally you're going to have uh, naming issues, um, Things are going to uh, have to be re organized, reorganized. And um, so when we go into the custom properties, we're going to apply the part number. This will be the uh, rename. Uh, since I don't have the 1040 material, that's kind of a strange material. Uh, we'll go ahead and let it save. So nothing. Um, Nothing jumping out at a 1040, um, 1045. I think the 1020 is probably uh, the most um, uh, available. So we'll go with the cold rolled. 
and I'm in millimeters, grams, and seconds, so I'm picking my units as grams, and I'll assign it as the drawn by, and today's date. When I apply all of that, then that is the same as going into the file properties, and we'll see the drawn by and the drawn date, and then because if this did a configuration of maybe we need a link that is 30, 40, 50, um, you know, something else uh, in the mix. I could probably do the center links, but I don't want to beat up the configurations too much. But when I set up those, um, uh, the property tab, um, I did it with the, uh, the intention that if I created configurations, I would have that to be able to utilize. So if you uh, are following the file properties and just put everything in the custom, go select part number, revision, those, those items, you can populate out those fields in the material. All right, but it's not, not critical. All right, so let's find the plate. And looking at this, we have uh, to the intersection, and that looks centered 6 by 12. So I'm going to try um, to uh, do a, an offset for the, uh, for the center lines. So front plane, sketch. And if I put those in... We have uh, 80 to the centers. Oh, and I did not make those. Did I? Uh, I launched the uh, the inch. So, in that case, we will go 80 millimeters. And as soon as I realized that now well, 3.15 inches is not where I wanted to be, and I switch over to millimeters, grams, and seconds, I know it's going to kick me out of the sketch. We'll go ahead and edit the sketch again. And the two legs are equal, so I can set those. And we'll go ahead with a um, uh, setting this to for construction. And if I offset the entities both directions, all right, so bidirectional, we don't want to cap the ends. And uh, I'm probably going to run into a little bit with the, oh, and I didn't adjust the number, but let's go ahead and make that for construction. And we'll go six there and six there. So after we make the adjustments, it'll be bidirectional, but we don't necessarily have to um, put that, um, put them at the same values. All right, so for using the contours and regions, I can. Uh, go point to point, and let's see, those two circles are going to be equal. While we're there, we'll jump into the smart dimension, and we have a radius of 15, so a diameter of 30. All right, so those are all looking pretty good. Might as well go with the, um, the center line again. And... Since um, I'm probably going to make this more complicated than it's worth, but we will uh, we'll put it out there. We have the six typical, so let's go ahead with that one. And we have the two regions, and the last is not on the same center, so maybe I don't want to do that. Let's go um, to the center point arc, which I think it would be on the um, on the offset circle. So make sure that I can get that geometry in there. We'll go up four. And what did it feed from the back for the other hole location? So 20, 30 is 50, and 26. So basically it would be four off of that side as well. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at this little arc. I'm not going to worry about the inside fillets until we get there. 
Um, that is the one hole that is offset, kind of uh, kind of strange. So I have a radius of 15 on this one. Okay, and that looks, well, pretty big, but uh, I think we're there. So what I'd be interested in with all of these lines crossing over is can I extrude this in one shot? I'm going to worry about the holes as a separate cut. So let's go into the extrude and see if it will let me have on the sections the highlighted. So even though this is a messy sketch, I am still getting pretty good, um, pretty good results with it. And let's go ahead and add that last region. So if you want to trim it out, you want to draw it a little more detail, it's all going to work. Um, it's just a matter of the geometry. Okay, maybe it won't all work. Okay, so I think that the offset entities have the same properties as, and I'm gonna, that's pretty close, so I'm gonna go ahead and make those coincident as the converting the entities. So I need to drag those guys back and probably going to be on the safer side to make those coincident. So it does end up with just a little bit of a of a triangle there. So maybe I should have um, make sure I'm grabbing those. And if it doesn't, then we'll just trim. So I definitely know the outside ones. And if it's not going to let me have it, then I would go ahead and trim. All right, well, so something's going on with the uh, the drag there. I'm not going to fight it too much, but on my trim, trim to closest. We'll just go through and clean those out. And interesting that that still didn't go to being fully in the region. Oh, found the interior region, so. Well, let's see what that does. Features, extrude. And 10 millimeters on the thickness. All right, so that took care of my geometric conditions anyway. So let's go with the, uh, the whole locations. So at the center, if I want to find the center of the arcs, we're going to go hover over the perimeter. And those two will be equal. And then we have two more. Two more. And then the last one. All right. So in this case... I should be able to, let's see, are all these the same size, radius of 10, or diameter of 10, and the rest are fives. And they're on the same center line. So select, control, select, control, select, vertical. Select, control, select, control, select, horizontal. Those guys aren't going to be so easy, so I'll just go to center line. And we'll make those coincident. All right, so going from left to right, I should have the items interior of the window. And then I'm going to control select the last two, set those all to equal, and that becomes five. Now the spacing, we know that those were 10. And since it did not pick up the other one, I did not set it equal. So select, control, select, equal. And then from the whole locations, we can go 30. And then we're doing chain dimensions for 26. If we go back to 20, Oh, I guess I didn't get that one, so that one should be... Oh, that was the one they, that they came off for. So a couple Control-Zs to get out of that. 
I'll go back into the right click. And we're going to do the same thing. 30 and 26. And then the last one, I still want to do that one. So actually, since I mentioned that one, let's go ahead and make those concentric. So the arc, the arc and the circle can be concentric. And I expect that it would, um, would have um, that issue. So I want to make the dimension driven. And we'll go back to the one that uh, has the dimension on it for the equal. And if we just wanted to see the, the separation, we could make that dimension driven as well, just for it to verify. All right, these two go to 40. And as long as we stay close to the selection, it will pull up the angle. Metal looks pretty good. So feature extrude cut. And this is going to be a through all as long as it's going the right direction. All of our radiuses are three except for this one. So I'm going to put in the fillet at 10. Oh, and it's already 10. The next one will go in as a fillet and since I'm here, we'll pick the three and I can tab, I can see that one. So then the next would be to find all of the verticals. So that little in context, you wait a second for it to, uh, to pick up. If it doesn't show up, deselect the next one, reselect it, and you're going to go across the list until you see all of the, uh, the preview that makes, uh, makes sense. All right, so that one looks pretty good. I need to assign my file properties, and this one's going to be AM312-1, revision A, still using that 1040. Um, if I'm going to do the material enough, actually I should have stayed with 20 anyway, so maybe we'll go from the, uh, the 1020 to the or, uh, cold rolled just to the standard. And we'll do that out of the assembly to show that you can modify those in process. All right, so the next one, I think I got everything. If not, we'll figure it out. Oh, would probably help to save it. So let's go ahead and save this as the plate. And I don't like commas in my name, so we're just going to go plate web. And if we stay with the naming, this one should be link drive. <laughs> so. Um, go ahead and close that out and then we'll go find the next center link or rocker link and then a center link and two pegs. So the pegs we'll do as a configuration. The question is do I want to do the center links and the center link and the rocker link as a configuration. All right so we'll do the uh, the first one. And if you want to make the uh, the center link as a separate part, you're going to follow the same um, same process um, and either do the save as and uh, open and just change the dimensions, or we can set the configuration. So this these are drawn in the vertical. So we'll go with the part metric. Um, could almost take the um, the first link. So why don't we do that? And I'll open up the drive link. And other than it being um, sideways, we can go to a save as, save as copy and open. And we go to the rocker link. And I'm going to say that uh, we'll start the configuration here just so that we have the save as copy and open and now I have the rocker link. don't need the original document open so I'll go ahead and close it all right so the change here is to edit the sketch and we'll change the dimension to 70 
And the centers to the second slot then pick up that point and that point. And it is 10 across, so I can pick the two lines. And from the whole center to the slot center goes 15. And it's still five millimeters thick, so we should be okay there. All right, so this is the default. And what I would really like is to have the configuration come in. So adding the configuration, um, and actually I should have named this just a generic link, so we'll have to go back and change that before we go into the assembly. Maybe we'll do it after the assembly so that um, the, uh, the reason that we rename using the SolidWorks utility uh, becomes a little more apparent. So I want to pick up the configuration name, the rocker link. All right, so now that I'm in the rocker link, I usually leave the default uh, without any of the custom properties. Um, this now became dash four, vision A, said that I was going to just make this 20. Everything else should be good, so we apply it. And then we can go back and add the next configuration is going to be the center link. And it is not set to configuration name, so we'll add that one real quick. And the center link for its dimensions go to 90 and 20 on the, um, the depth and becomes 312-3. Okay, so we apply that. We go back into our sketch and change that to 90 and change that to 20. Oh, and since I wasn't paying attention, we get to do that again. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control Z. And let's just go ahead, go ahead and edit it. Because what I didn't do was check to make sure that it was this configuration. So in this configuration, that goes to 20. In this configuration, that goes to 90. OK, so when it rebuilds, or since we're in the, uh, the sketch, and it saves, then I would also want to go back to the rocker link. And we'll just go ahead and edit that sketch as well. Make sure that it's at this configuration, don't need to change it, and that configuration. So those are all good. All right, so the naming should be there except for the title. And then um, Let's go ahead and close that. And the last one of the group should be the pegs. So part metric, front plane, sketch, circle. And we're doing 10 millimeters. The first one will be by 10 millimeters long. So extrude. And there's no configuration yet, so this just establishes the default. And we're going to add configuration so that we have the 10 by 10 peg. And we'll, we'll stay with the, uh, the grouping peg 10 by 10. And go to its configuration name. And since we're here, let's go ahead and add the configuration for the 10 by 15. So peg 10 by 15. Also make sure that it is the configuration name. And we'll accept. And when we double click, so last time I didn't check for this box, but I do want it to be the configuration name. That one goes to 15, should be good. And when we double check the peg 10, go ahead and rebuild. 15 rebuild, and there we see that it, it changed. So the generic name then just becomes peg. And I guess I hit the caps, so we'll go that, um, that route.
All right, so that gives me my parts. The next video will be for the assembly and figuring out what mistakes I made and where I made them. And we will build out from there.